is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening and welcome to Thursday Night Fun Factory. Uh, we're going to play some Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, this evening, as we do every Thursday. Uh, but next week, there will be no show on Thursday because we will be landing in sunny Denver, Sunshine State, uh, <laughs> where we'll be doing a show the following night in Boulder, Colorado, Skid. We've talked about this a couple times. How excited are you that we're finally bringing you home and you leaving know, you there? You, you thought I will actually already be there waiting for you. I'm going out a little bit early because I'm just that excited. You joke saying calling it the Sunshine State, but it's famously you can. It's uh, famous for having 300 days of sunshine a year <sighs> on average, and odds are it will be sunny when we when we are there. I have never been more excited to do a show. Oh, oh man, that's so great. I, I can't wait. I think my sister is going to be there. At least one of them is going to be there, maybe two awesome. of them. <gasps> uh, really? Yeah. yeah. A bunch of my friends are coming. Uh, I don't think my dad is coming, but my stepmom might be there. I I can't wait. It's, it's going to be amazing. Denver in April, come on. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, all of these famous friends we've heard about uh, over the years. Skid, so <laughs> many Shelton's famous, gonna hilarious. Be there. Nick, Nick Shelton's, Shelton's going to be there. His <laughs> brother Jason, um, <laughs> who uh, was the inspiration for a Token on South Park. I think I've told you that story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, my friend Dave Flomber's going to be there. Dell's going to be there, obviously. Obviously. Uh, Finally, Dell doesn't have to fly. He doesn't have to fly anywhere. To go to a show. To walk there. Uh, my friend Rob, uh, yeah, tons, a lot, lot of my friends are gonna be there. My friend John Bell, who I used to uh, do my my D and D campaign in the attic uh, back in middle school, he's gonna be there. Uh, hopefully, uh, very excited. Yeah, uh, I can't wait. We're gonna have so much fun, and uh, you know, as I said last week, uh, I'm sure by the time this is airing now, uh, we are sold out. I'd be shocked uh, if we weren't. But hey, there may still be time to see us in St. Paul. Asheville, LA, and Seattle in both May and June. Head on over to glasscannonnetwork.com slash tour. Buy those tickets and come see us. It really is. Until you see it live, you've never really seen it. It's a whole different experience. We have so much fun. And uh, I mean, we've got this exciting new cast now uh, that we rocked in Philly that we're going to be rocking all year long. Uh, so please come on and see us. <laughs> Here's what I want to talk about for banter today. Uh, very quickly, because I want to get into the show, because I want to make sure that we cover everything to set up uh, whatever's going to happen in Boulder. Because I don't know what you guys are going to do tonight. But uh, I have been reading, uh, I read books to Archer every night uh, before bed and Dash as well. But we kind of have to separate. We're, we're running a zone defense now with three children. And so I, uh, I get, he picks one story, and then I'll usually read from this like Avengers book that just like goes through everyone that the Avengers have ever been in the Avengers or has fought the Avengers. It's like A to Z. It's like 300 pages. We're, we're on C. And, uh, and then I'll read, uh, for the past few months, I've been reading this, uh, trade, uh, that I got him, um, cause he was into Thor and I was like, well, I'll buy you an old Thor book. One that's like, before you could like do nasty stuff in comics. Like in the eighties, there was a rule. You weren't allowed to like say bad words and stuff like that. And I changed the words and, uh, anyways, but we're reading the mighty Thor. It's, uh, oh. it's by Walter Simonson. Walt Simonson. Yeah. yeah. The old yeah. Walt Simonson run. Yeah. I, so I, I never, I've never, I've seen, I think I saw the second, I saw Thor Ragnarok, but I never saw the first Thor. Never saw Love and Thunder. I've seen him in the Avengers, but I never quite understood Thor. I'm not saying I fully understand him now, but I fucking love the whole Thor mythos. Like, I've learned so much that I never knew. I never knew Midgard was Earth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. Never knew this. You, what you need to read. Hold on one second. <laughs> Bye. Matthew Bye, has Matthew. stepped out of frame <laughs> and apparently fell asleep. Oh, what yeah. you need to read is the prose edda ah oh. which is a, oh, yes. the source of a lot of our knowledge of north mythology can it, i borrow that sure um it is written uh it is written you should read it only because <laughs> the author's name is <laughs> yeah. snorley 
Sturluson. Story of Sturluson. Oh, yeah. Early Sturluson. There's also the Poetic Edda, which is the other source of a lot of our knowledge in Norse mythology. But the Prose Edda is short and it's uh, it's fun. Are there Hold pictures? on, let me grab a book too. <laughs> no, but are we having a get, book off? You can get the Doll Heirs. Oh. Is that Whoa. The new game? Whoa. Norse mythology. Look at that. A guide the... to the gods, heroes, rituals, and beliefs. It is by John Cthulhu. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got the, books. The other, one, the other one is that actually you should get this because it's great for kids is the Doll Heirs book of Norse mythology and Greek mythology with these beautiful illustrations. The Greek one was all, has always been in print. It was like a staple of my childhood, but the Norse one went out of print and has come back in print and is beautiful. We That's banned the classics book. in my house. Hmm. You banned the classics. Yes. The policy. Okay. That's, uh, uh, that makes it hard. everybody. I don't have a book, but I have a knife. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It's an old I didn't man know that was book. I <laughs> have a beretta. It's Booker Knife Day. It's on, Booker. Uh, Knife Day. Day. Oh. Booker Knife Day. Okay, do you have a book or a knife? Um, (laughs) This room is still pretty empty because I'm still like figuring out what to put in here. But next to me on my little dice plant tray, Mm -hmm. um, I've got the two. (gasps) Oh, Remember we got these? Uh, What the con was? Gen Con. Uh, We got them at Gen Con. Or no, Pax Unplugged. Right, right, right. Um, They're these like little tiny like one-off books from Morkborg. One of them has like a solo slash micro game. Which is that cool. we're gonna play, right, Kate? That we're gonna play, and then like this one's got like a dungeon in it or something. I don't know. They're cool, and then I also got like this extra spells thing, oh, and then I also cool. got a coin to flip back and forth. So if you ever roll one d two, I flip my little creepy Markborg coin. Look at you. And anyway, that's what I have next to me. That is book and book adjacent. No yeah. knife. They're no books. knife. Just no knife. They're, no knife. they're <laughs> Just, uh, uh, like square-ish, they're rectangular, <laughs> they have covers, and they have pages inside with words and pictures on them. Sounds like a so book So that to me yeah. sounds like a book. <laughs> it's Don't no nice. so defensive. Well, <laughs> you're coming for me again. <laughs> you, I think what he's trying game. to say is <laughs> you, don't, you don't own any novels, do you? That's what Joe is trying to say. Um, yeah. Listen, you guys, you got me. I don't. I don't know how to read. <laughs> Bust. You're the Leah Michelle of the Glass Cannon podcast. I just pretend that I know how to read. <laughs> the Leah Michelle, amazing. That's why when you're like, "Oh, your spell has the incapacitate trait," I'm like, "I don't know what those words mean." I just see squiggles. <laughs> <laughs> Any other knives? Uh, I, oh yeah, I have a knife. Oh, nice. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Careful, That's man. a good one. Damn, That's not a knife. <laughs> Pull that up pretty quickly. <laughs> Put that away. That's a knife. That's Think about a knife. that next time you try to come for me, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe does. has yet to show a book or a knife. I'm starting to think maybe Joe can't read or defend himself. Or <laughs> fight. <laughs> Let it be maybe known. Maybe Joe is Joe vulnerable Brand. intellectually and physically. <laughs> book. Or knife. I, 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 <laughs> tonight we play our weekly game of book or knife. It's <laughs> book or knife night. <laughs> As is tradition, Joe, you're up next. Uh, I just book grabbed. I grabbed a book that was in reach here. One of our favorites uh, among uh, at least Troy and I. I'm not sure uh, which of you hasn't read this amazing sci-fi novel. Hyperion. Oh, baby. Yeah, I'm just right going through reach. the audiobook. Oh, and that's really good. I've always loved this cover so much because to me, it just, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's going to be a terrible book. <laughs> and you have no idea how good this book is. <laughs> like, it kind of looks like a Danielle Steele novel. Yeah, it looks like, like Danielle Steele, is, <laughs> but it's about a metal monster. It's yeah. a metal spiky monster. Yeah, it looks like Fabio did the model for <laughs> the guy on the cover, yeah. but no, it's like, and I'm and telling it's cool you, because I was such a big uh, Canterbury Tales fan in high school, and mm. it's like largely almost an homage. By, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sydney, you don't know this one or haven't read this one yet? No, but I also do really like the Canterbury Tales, and now I'm looking that up. Joe, I love your book recommendations. So every time you make a recommendation, I I do take it to heart. So I'm I am adding that to my my reading list. You yeah, this one that. is like one of the yeah. most famous ever sci-fi how's the, novels. Yeah. How's the audiobooks good? It's great. It's fantastic. It's really I've recently good. recently started delving into audiobooks and I'm having a great time. Oh, oh yeah, you just finished I've got a great uh, re- 
Andy Circus, the, the Andy Circus Lord of the Rings, right? Andy Circus reading the oh, Hobbit. I have the Lord Hobbit, of the Rings. Right. But yeah, it's uh, it's predictably amazing. But now I'm I'm of course in for Legacy of the Ancients listeners. Uh, I'm listening to the Lonesome Dove uh, oh, audio, oh. which is I'm reading it right now. I mean, oh, awesome. The audiobook it's, is so good. Oh. It's so it's it's Lee Horsley. It's Matt Houston himself. It, Lee Horsley doing the audiobook, and it's way better than I would have expected from Lee Horsley. It's really good. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Um, yeah, I, I just want the make... only thing that would be hilarious if you pull if you then opened Hyperion and you were hiding a knife. <laughs> and <there was> a <laughs> knife in it. Yeah, if, if I this was show was scripted, enough. that would have been perfect. <laughs> I was fast enough. I just wanted to recommend an audiobook to you, Matthew. That is one of my favorite audiobooks I have ever experienced, and it is the audiobook version of. Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've read, it, I've read that. I read that uh, as a book. Okay. It's so good. The audiobook is so good. The British guy that does it, he's dead now. He died. It was so sad. He's such a good narrator. And it just, it tells you this, this story of science in the world that is just unbelievable. It's so I good. added it to my wish list regardless, because that's how seriously I take your recommendation. Awesome. Awesome. There you have it. Two knives. <laughs> <laughs> Two knives, three books tonight on Book or Knife. <laughs> Joe, I, uh, Troy, I can't help but notice you didn't show us a book or a knife. I did. I, I, I showed that. Uh, yeah, he showed oh, a cult you did. or oh, something. Sorry. You showed Octo Cthulhu. Octo Cthulhu. Octo Cthulhu. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Modiphius. They make a shiny book. I'll tell you that. Yeah, they make a good looking book. Make a good looking book. Um, but yeah, the, it all, that, that Thor story, Thor's Thor's pretty cool. I yeah, no so I, when I, I don't know anything about any of the Avengers. I never read any of the comics, really. And I, all I knew was like video games, basically. And then I saw Thor, because it's one of the first ones. It's like, mm -hmm. and I was like, this has got to be stupid. Like Thor, you know, the God of Thunder or whatever. And the movie was great. And I loved the Thor mythos. Like, that's what it was. It really jumped out at me. I was like, this is so fascinating. And it's so good for humor. It's just so rife with the ability for great comedy, for rich comedy, when you have like a god clashing with mortals in a real way. It's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was so. listening to a, a podcast that where Jerry Duggan, the comic book writer, was was talking, and he was talking about when he was a kid. This is like before Comic Con was a huge thing. He was growing up in small town in small town Jersey, and he would have he and his comic book reading friends would like fought, like go to the comic conventions that were these tiny little like. Sometimes it was just like a high school gymnasium and he went to one and it was Walt Simonson. I think Louise Simonson was there too. And they were doing a table together and doing a signing and there was no one online. They happened to go up there and they started asking him questions about like how you make a comic book. And apparently Walt Simonson like took out his notebook and he was like showing them like how he, he was like, I'll sketch out the page. And then I'll like, and, and then he like, he's like, Oh, you want this? And he like tore pages <laughs> out of his own notebook and handed it to these like 12 year olds who were, like, oh, lost that's their cool. minds. Oh, that's like, amazing. Cool. Yeah, Actually, that's so. funny, too, because one night we were playing Council of Thieves, Joe's Council of Thieves campaign, and Jerry Duggan almost came and sat in on the game one night because Nick was uh, was his editor. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, you want to come like for, for a night, like come play Pathfinder with us? And he was just like, yeah, if I can swing it. And he didn't end up coming. Yeah. But uh, he, well, he no, said he wanted to. <laughs> so. quick, uh, quick grammar and dialect question. Uh, now that you mention it, Matthew jumped out at me. Do you guys wait online? Or in line? Describe the situation. I'm saying, do you use the term when you're waiting in line? I say I'm waiting in line at the DMV. I say Do you in wait line. in line or do you wait online? Because I'm in between two people usually. Waiting, I'm in the line. In I guess I use them interchangeably. Same. Or do Inter you really? I, saw, I heard you say I was, they were waiting online waiting and online. I never say that. I say I usually line. say I'm waiting through line. But I'm waiting. <laughs> I like to play with words. I say like I'm waiting betwixt the line, but that's just me. Yeah, I'm I waiting say, betwixt the, the lines. These days, online means something else. So right, you, you don't want to yes. confuse people. Okay. I always Isn't this say like an American Canadian thing too. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, thank you, Matthew. That I usually say I'm waiting in a lineup to honor our Canadian cousins. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> of which we have none. Yeah, <laughs> and you, Joe. <laughs> Uh, I queue up. Okay. <laughs> he is a cure. He I'm a cure. I'm a big cure. <laughs> Look at that. I get the DMV and I turn to my wife and I go, Look at this queue. <laughs> and she is just this like, queue. I'm going to leave you. <laughs> is, that, is that the Brits? Like, I'm in the queue. Do they say, like, I'm in the queue for everything? Is that the Brits? Like, they're in yes. line at the they grocery store? They yeah. queue up. Waiting they in the queue. Up. 
Yeah. The Apparently is a New York idiom to say you stand online. Oh, yeah. I, oh. I, you're such a New Yorker, Matthew. Standing uh, online. I'm standing, standing online slice. Here. I'm in line here. Oh, shit. No, I'm online it up. here. Hey, I'm online. <laughs> Troy, you can't say anything because you say rum, so I you're do. not allowed to talk. I, I got a lot of fun words I do. One of them is rum. Uh, another one is what's in this scroll case? Oh, yes. yeah. Shaka gunka goo. Scrolls are the best when you're a wizard. And it's so cool that you don't have to share it with anyone. Uh, do you think it was Poppet can do scrolls? Really? Uh, yeah. Ooh. I think. I'm pretty sure I'm I read that like today. I refuse I'm, to roll off against a pop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced that Afraid this guy was a really shitty wizard and he just had a bunch of like fireball scrolls, but he can't act. He doesn't have any spell slots. He just was burning scrolls and this is his last one. <laughs> I bet you as Atticus is frightened is fading away and he is shaking with fear and he has used both of these incredible spells to deflect this guy's attacks. He's like, he was not weak. <laughs> I mean, this guy was a bad ass. Yeah, this yeah, guy came out. Scroll is like, it's like cheating on a test. <laughs> just, I don't know. Why don't you open it up and see what it is, and then we can all fight about it once we actually know if it's important or not. You open it up, and two papers fall out because it's two scrolls. Uh, Amazing! They appear nice. to be identical. Um, do you want to try and um, decipher I, this? Yeah. Identify yeah. the magic. Yeah. Uh, Arcana. Mm-hmm. Does that sound good to you? That'll good, do. buddy. 25. Huh? 25. Um, let's see here. I think that's going to be good enough. Yeah, that'll be good enough to know that these are scrolls of Dimension Door. <gasps> oh! Amazing! Hell yeah. Two scrolls of Dimension Door. So that means we don't need to fight. We can share. We can yeah. each take one. Amazing. <laughs> well, this is two. Wait, it's not yeah. seventeen. <laughs> no, I'm so, well, only Eris and I would use it, right? I mean, it, yeah. is it on your spell list? I don't Eris? know. Um. So my um. <laughs> oh, oh, topic. Oh, I'm can... sorry, Suki. I forgot you were there. I can oh, cast right. spells too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Does Dimension Door appear on the Divine Spell List? Also, do you cast Divine Spell? No, Primal. Wait, what are you? Drew it. I, I have Weirdo. some primal. Arcane I'm looking. and a cult. Arcane. Nice. Yes, I knew it. A ah. cult. Got it. Yeah, opening a door the, that bypasses normal space, you instantly transport yourself and any items you're wearing and holding from your current space to a clear space within range you can see. If this would bring another creature with you, even if you're carrying it in an extra-dimensional container, the spell is lost. That's a big difference. Yeah, so uh, he was trying to burn one to get out of that sticky wicket that he was in, surrounded by all of you, to uh, slide away and regroup. Uh, But Ethel landed the killing blow. So now you stand in front of this lunar prison (laughs) um, with a portcullis that is down. However, you can see through it into a room that is, you know, I'll even reveal the room because um, you can see through uh, into a room that has a door at the end uh, and the, the room appears to be empty. Wait, it's so about the, what, uh, 25 feet long, 15 feet tall? Just to clarify, when we were in the guardhouse, like Ethel is in the guard, or in the, yeah, guardhouse. There's no way to get into the main building from this guardhouse. It doesn't appear so. Yeah, no, the guardhouse, like the only way in and out of the guardhouse was climbing through the windows, and uh, you don't see any means of getting into the building from there. Um, Hmm. And you also don't see any means of raising the portcullis um, from within the guardhouse, so he was totally bullshitting you. Um, Yeah, that's why I said he was a filthy liar. You were right. you You gave him the business. And yeah. it really hit home for him, I think, clearly because of the how demoralized he was. Um, yeah, for sure. Ethel is going to help anybody who needs help climbing through the window. And then but there's nothing us. in there. There's a door in this room 
No, no. Troy was saying we can't get into the room where the portcullis leads to through the guardhouse. There's no way through the guardhouse. Oh, we could see into it through the portcullis, you were saying. I misunderstood. Yes, yes, yes. Suki... Suki wants to check this guy's body. She's pretty hurt, and uh, she just wants to see if he has any healing on him. Uh, yeah, you want to search the body. Obviously, you find the two scrolls of Dimension Door. Um, but beyond that, uh, he doesn't have anything else on his person um, because he used his two scrolls of fifth-level fireball. I oh, fucking knew it. This Suki. guy sucks so bad, and he used scrolls the entire and time. You're right. Wait. A cheater. Cheater. Look, they're all burnt up. He already used him. What a waste. Do you not have any more elixirs of life? I can. I have. I have mine. Oh, oh. yes. I do need to use those. Aldo yeah. gave them to us. Actually, yeah. I do have my elixir lesser. I'm going to use that. Moderate. Moderate. We had it, one moderate and two lesser. Total. Yeah. But. I guess I could use my moderate at this time. I am pretty low. I'm just going to. Can we take ten minutes to treat wounds? Yeah. Let's do <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, For sure. let's do that. Uh, I see you, uh, so Ethel has it, yeah. uh, and you're the only one, Ethel, right? I can do it as well. Uh, but you're just going to do it on yourself? You took a ton of damage, right? Yeah, I guess I'll yeah. just do it on myself. Okay. Uh, and I'll just drink good. those uh, consumables, because I'm down a lot, and I'll, I'll just use up. But I should be fine after those. And then, um, I, I mean, this is just a note, I guess... Well, all right, so, I don't know if I can learn this spell from this scroll. I don't see anything about it. Oh, to, like, learn it and put it in your spell book? Yeah. Why do you think you can't learn it? I don't know, I'm blanking. I'm, like, 2E. Critical success on my my treat wounds. I don't know how you learn spells, but I just feed mine to egg. You feed yours to egg. Okay. It takes an hour for <laughs> egg to eat the scroll. Yeah, I don't but. know. Maybe we wait. Because here's the thing. If we utilize this scroll to go through the portcullis and open it from the other side, we then burn that scroll forever, and there's no ability to use it again. But if we take the time to learn it, then we could use Dimension Door forever. What or do you think, Egg? Only in the dreamlands. Interesting have, question. Do you have an hour? <laughs> right, right, right. And don't forget, the mention door is only for one of you. Why? He's saying oh. well, one of us will go in and open the door from the other side. Um, right, if there is a way to open the door from the other side. Keep that in mind. Um, well, why, why don't you take the hour, and meanwhile, uh, Ethel and maybe anyone who wants to come along we're gonna. I want to scout around the whole yeah. prison and see if there's another way to get it. Yeah, Suki will go. So we'll take the hours so you guys have Dimension Door, and then we can deal with that thorny rules question. And then in the meantime, <laughs> we'll do a little stealthy scout and see if we can find another means of ingress. Okay. Um, all right. So who's going with Ethel? Suki will go. Okay. So Suki and Ethel begin their. Uh, the roundabout here. Which way are you going? Are you going north around or south around? Let's go south around. What they, okay. They least expect. I don't know why. To the south. All right, great. So um, you go to the south and uh, you start circling the building and you notice about, I don't know, 50 feet or so, uh, right in the middle, there's like a, a section of the building that sticks out pinging it here on the map right now. Yep. Um, and then it just keeps going um, and then turns to the north and you come around and then when you get all the way to the north uh, side, uh, there does seem to be uh, another small like uh, side entrance. Great. Perception check? or yeah, That's a good yeah. idea. Perception show you actually when you were coming in you saw this um, while you were flying in on the Shantak, but um, you were accosted by the ghoul before you could even think to check out this little side door. Uh, can we listen at the door? Yeah. Uh, twenty. Thirty. It's our twenty-one. You don't hear anything. Very obviously, very thick walls. Um, 
it's uh, the stone is very strange it's like the way it's it's it doesn't look carved or like man-made uh, at all it just looks like one continuous block that was shaped into this building does it look like we could open it uh-huh all right um ethel will check to see if it's trapped um, 23. 23. Uh, no, it doesn't appear to be trapped. All right. Very tentatively, he will open the door ever so slightly. I can roll stealth if you want me to, but the idea is I just want to open it so far, just make sure it's not locked. And so I can just like peek in to see if this is a safe place for us to gather. Yes, yeah, so you peek in and you see like a, a little, oh, it looks like a little room. Oh, pan- a pantry or something. Oh, great. Okay, um, I will cl- uh, leave the door where it is and then maybe gather the others while they're, and then bring them back here so we can all... Suki will stand guard at the door just waiting for everybody to come back. Hey, uh, we found a side way in. Oh, sideways, good. Sweet. Well then, perhaps we should go. Eris, we could work on this later. I mean, that took some time. So, if, so my idea was like, if you guys want to do learn the scroll while we're scouting. Even if I learn it, I haven't like prepared it. I guess maybe my patron can do it and then I, they can open a door if we need to. Yeah, you would have to prepare it. And then also you, uh, you have to expend materials to learn it uh, that are very valuable. Uh, no, mine just says, my familiar can learn any spell of my tradition by physically consuming a scroll, and it takes one hour. Huh. Okay. Um, I- I'd be surprised if yours were free, but everyone else's aren't. But um, Could be a witch thing. Yeah. Yeah, because the Gormley was the same thing. Yeah, I fed, I fed it to... I, there was a role involved, though, but I did it. I fed yeah. it to uh, Howie. Yeah, the physical materials, components, and costs are provided when the scroll is created, so you don't need those um, when you're casting from a scroll. It's all part. It's built into the scroll. Um, so you don't need to provide those when you're casting a spell from a scroll. Um, to learn a spell, you must do the following. Spend one hour per level of the spell, during which you must remain in conversation with the person who is spell or have the magical writing in your possession. Have materials with the price indicated in Table 4-3, uh, which is for a Level 4 spell, which is what Dimension Door is, it is 36 gold pieces. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a different process for learning uh, from the scroll. witch. It doesn't yeah. say anything like like that. And it, it says other ways I can learn spells. It's like talk, like my familiar can talk to another familiar for a while and learn spells that way, and all these different ways. And for that, it just says that one sentence: it can eat them. Hmm. I'm sure consume doesn't mean eat, but for me, it means eat. Yeah, probably eat. it's probably yeah. eat. Yeah. Okay. Um, very cool. Well, if you do take an hour, uh, or if like at least Eris takes an hour to have. Um, egg eat it and Atticus decides to hold off you could treat wounds again if you do take that full hour I would love to treat wounds again which is why I was pushing for it oh me too I can also soothe you if you like I only have one of those though soothe 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 uh, you right now <laughs> well I'm going to treat myself treat yourself treat yourself treat yourself there we go. 13 more points. Of oh, I critically range. succeeded again. Oh, man. Well, you know what? I'm down 20. Okay. Ooh. I critically succeeded too. This is good because I, I was down quite a lot. That fireball really hurt me, actually. Bless, Bless you. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so... You guys heal up a little bit. Um, Eris now probably knows or can can prepare Dimension Door tomorrow. Uh, and Atticus is going to hold on to the scroll. You go back up to this uh, little side door. And uh, who's going in first? Ethel will lead the way. Sorry, I was just reading about I was. Re- I think Kate is right. It does seem the learn a spell activity is seems separately described in the in the uh, witches. The text of the witches familiar in the advanced player's guide. Huh. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll, I thought we'll lead the way, uh, and I will step into the little pantry. You step into this little, step into this little pantry, and uh, the walls contain several shelves that are stacked with bags and barrels. Um, you pass through this thick metal door um, to get in here, and you look around, and the only other exit that you see from this room is like a four foot square of grill work of close set iron bars that are anchored into the stone um, and there's a metal funnel that is jammed into the grill work and the wide end of the funnel is facing uh, this room and that's actually right uh, that grill work that I speak of is right to your uh, right Ethel um, I will examine the grill work is it trapped? I'll roll perception. Mm-hmm. Uh, 24. Doesn't appear to be trapped. It, it looks like it's fused right into the stone. It's got bars that are like one inch thick and spaced about three inches apart from each other in that space. Um, and you can kind of see past it into another room um, to the west. A hey, uh, Suki. Are you, uh, able to become a small creature? Um, let me remember what I put on my spell list. Uh, I took off pest form. I don't, I don't have it any longer. I didn't think I'd need it. Oh, wait, no, I can. Focus spell, baby. Um, uh, yeah. Do you want me to crawl under this little door like a little rat or something? Oops, sorry, Atticus, she says. (laughs) Um, Would it be a helpful? Filthy little rat. <laughs> you I know don't of no rats alone? here. Do you want me to bring egg? Well, I mean, I don't know if egg could fit, but I can turn into a gas. Oh. Oh. Oh, is that like a big spell for you, though? It's a level three spell. If I do. Or no, it's a level four spell. I'll just do the pest form, because I feel like save your spells, you have more effective fighting spells than I do. I think. Sounds good. Uh, okay, let me see what I turn into. I turn into... <laughs> mm-hmm. like Russian roulette. Uh, why isn't it, it telling random? me what I... No, I want to pick, but it's not telling me my list. You're just uh, going to start looking at the list now? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, of all of the animals in existence? <laughs> no, normally when I pull it up in the spell, it like brings up the things I can turn into. Why, does Why don't it you bring just it turn into oh, a tiny go. orangutan? Just I'm turn turning into, a into tiny orangutan. I'm turning into a lizard. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. We're gonna like split hairs here. Orangutan, <laughs> lizard. Let's go. Like Try my lizard token. One. That runs uh, like this with its your lizard token. Yes, yes. Yeah, like a. I forget what those are. Yeah, they run on their hind legs. Yes. And then they hiss at you with their little frills that come out. All right. There you are. Um, I'll let you control your lizard. Where am I? Uh, you're right next to. Here, I'll put you right there. There you are. Oh. Oh, I, I'm so small. So small. Yeah, you're a lizard. All right. Oh, yeah. I can even see you. <laughs> I run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, you are small enough to uh, to fit through there. That's pretty cool. And uh, you find yourself in a room here. Now, with your small lizard brain, uh, you can still tell um, that it's a kitchen, um, and there looks to be a uh, to be a door leading to the south, uh, and all sorts of stuff in this kitchen. Okay, um, with my lizard brain. I'm going to go under this next door just to see what there is since I'm still so tiny. Um, it's the it's metal. Uh, it's a thick metal door that goes all the way to the floor. There's no crack. The oh, I bonk my little head. Bonk. Uh, and then I run back to this door and I try to open it as a lizard. Can I do that? <laughs> the grate? You just walk through it. Oh, is there no like mechanism or anything? No, no, no. no. She's trying to open it for us. No, yeah, yeah no, there's no mechanism. It's, it's Like I said, it's fused right into the stone. It's like a little grate. Ah. Um, Seems like a strange. Uh, what the tactic. hell is this fucking setup? All right, so I'm yeah. gonna come out of lizard form, I guess. So you I'm, have to use the scroll, I, I guess. I, I don't. Hold on, I'll come out. I'll come out of room. lizard form. I'll come out of lizard form. 
This is enormously frustrating. And it, right. I, I, it's like, can you even learn a spell from a Dreamland scroll? Because you're not going to carry it with you back, right? You never know. Weird things happen in the Dreamlands. They do. Um, all right, so you're going to you're going to turn back into yourself while in uh while in the kitchen or you're going to come back through. No, I'm going to turn into it in the kitchen. I'm trying to find a way to let them in. Okay. Um all right, so let me let me get you in. Just making absolutely sure. Oh my god. You'd be trapped in there. You'd yeah, be this trapped is trapped in the I, Wait. There has to be a way out of the kitchen. I know there's, there's a, doors a, to the there's a door. There's a door. There's a door. There's a door. Oh, you can't slip under it as yeah. a wizard. I gotcha. All right, quick perception check on this door as my human self. All right, well, let me describe the kitchen to you now that you're not a dumb lizard. Um, <laughs> you see... <laughs> I don't know, lizard's stupid? I just well, assume that... Uh, well, lizard still looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is like... Uh, yeah, this is like stone slab tables. You see a large oven. There are thick steel mixing pots and tools um, that looks like they could prepare food for dozens of people um there are uh, there aren't many sharp knives the, the couple of knives you see are thick but they're blunt um there's there's stains all over the place and a real weird rotting smell uh pervading the room um and and now that you're on the other side of the grate you see like stains right below this funnel and little bits of food it almost um almost seems like food and liquid is being passed through that funnel from either the kitchen to the uh, pantry or from the pantry to the kitchen. Very, very strange. <sighs> okay. Like being shoved through this funnel. Um, gross. Uh, Suki <laughs> waves to Ethel from the other side of the gate and shrugs her shoulders. I don't know what this puzzle is, but I'll be right back. Uh, and she runs back over the door. That's a natty 19 for a 34 perception at the door. Uh, except for the door, you don't hear anything um, uh, or see anything. Uh, I would like to stealthily crack this door and peek out. Okay. Find out what's on the other side of that door right after this quick break. Everyone knows it's always best to split the party. <laughs> to send somebody in alone. Before, and by the way, I want to just say, but I'll get the music back here, but before these, this uh, place is completely covered in Suki's blood, <laughs> I would like to mention that this map is sick, by the I way. I was going to say, it this is a really If we cool haven't said map. anything, this is a great map. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to say anything against the the, pa the Paizo maps; they were they were great. This map <laughs> takes that ma this actual map to a completely different level. Uh, shout out to Dave M, who crushed yeah, it. Yeah, Dave this. M, Dave, thank you, you Dave crushed M. It. Thanks, crushed Dave. it. The M stands for map. <laughs> <laughs> map maker Dave. Dave my buddy, maps. My buddy, my buddy Dave Map did this. Dave maps. maps. I you love call him maps. Dave Map for nothing. <laughs> Well, uh, here's what Davy Maps has uh, in store for you. A room. A room uh, that looks like a mess hall. There are three long tables of this strange dark wood um, with matching benches that fill the hall. Um, and the tables and the benches both are scarred uh, from years of use or years of abuse um, there's no remnants of any food or dishes or anything it's actually completely completely empty and that stink is still here the stink that you uh, smelt in the kitchen that rotting smell um, it's not any worse here or any better uh, and then you see uh, to the south a uh, big double door Southwestern portion of the room. 
Fuck. Really thought that this area was going to lead towards the portcullis. <laughs> um, <laughs> Never what you expect. Also, did everyone else see the room? Because I, I can't. Didn't. I just I can't see, see the, the door. Ro- yeah, the room's not revealed, just so you know, Troy. I'm imagining it. It revealed it. like a small, tiny part. Ah, there, we there, ah, there we go. There we go. Now it's... Okay. Everybody shut up. Suki. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is so funny. Suki, so a yeah, stupid lizard, comes into the kitchen, is like, oh, can't get through the door. Human opens the door, and then she's like, up oh, another door. And now she just goes back to Ethel at the gate. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah. This looks like a cartoon. Here's the deal. <laughs> um... I kind of thought that it would loop around, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. And I can either kind of maze it myself, but I don't, I don't really think that's a good idea. So do you want to possibly use one of the scrolls that we happened upon so that we could all enter together? No! What is, I can stop yelling! I can gaseous you? form, or I can send yeah. egg. Let's, why don't we send egg in through the portcullis? See if there's a way to open the port cost. Or I can use egg to send me with dimension door. Or that. I don't know what that means. Well, whatever spells egg knows, I know. I only know what egg knows. Whatever would make it so that we can all enter together, because you coming in as gaseous form doesn't really help Aldo or Atticus or Ethel. So. Okay. So you guys are uh, you guys are pretty smart. Oh wait, I didn't prepare Dimension Door. Perhaps we just have Egg run in through the portcullis. Can Egg open doors? Um, yeah. I mean, Egg is small. Yeah, so why don't maybe maybe Egg can go investigate the port, the room beyond the portcullis, see if there's a way to open it, and then we could, if so, Suki He's could, tiny. as a lizard, get in and open it. For him. Well, um, sorry, Suki. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> trying to like look through yes. try to see you from the she sticks like, her hand through I'm the I'm coming grate. I'm coming up Help. there was another door in there you're saying yes but it leads to the west so it doesn't lead toward the front of the building it leads to the back and honestly there's a horrid stench coming from this next room which appears to be an old mess hall of sorts I don't have a good feeling about any of this what if I were to make you invisible could you then move about unseen They'd see her open the door. Oh, yes. The gust indeed, of wind. But they might Moon think, yes, wind. A gust of wind. Especially if you made a wind sound. Something like. Oh, oh my that's God. Very good. That sounds just like. Are you an actress? Well, I've lived a long life. I've, I've had a lot of. A lot of careers. Have you ever heard of a Michael Winslow? <laughs> no, I can't say that I have. I know him. He's from where I come from. He's quite. He's got the same where's, sort of expertise you've just that, exhibited. And where's that from? Oh, I don't want to get into it. Not here on the moon. <laughs> are, you, are you from 1980s on the moon? <laughs> I keep forgetting we're on the moon. <laughs> Not here on the Dreamlands moon. Keep saying moon wind. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, Suki then remembers we're on the moon. She goes, "I'm in a moon kitchen." Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't stop moon spoon. Honestly, Atticus, at this point, fuck it. Big fuck it vibes from me. If you want to make me invisible, I'm I'm game, as they say. All right, well, give it a try. Remember, it will not cover the sound of your footfalls. You cannot make the slightest sound or people will know where you are. I knock a pan onto the ground as you're talking accidentally. Right, understood. Perhaps I should save this. I'm ready. He's gonna. He draws out a wand of invisibility, wafts it around. S of a B. She Double stands check on there. The John Jamski. She stands there in like a weird Titanic. Oh, no, but I can. Like, I can touch you, right? It's like through the grate. I just need to oh, touch yeah. you with the wand. So he just reaches through. Oh, Bamski. <laughs> and How do I know? Oh, Suki. Oh, no. Are you there? I really quietly reach through the grate and grab Atticus. Oh, get it! Get it! <laughs> it's just You're me. You're killing him! <laughs> You're killing him. Well, it's working then. Move Surprise. quickly. Remember, if you may take any aggressive action against a creature, you will break out of the illusion. Bye! She's already out of the room. Yeah. Bye! Suki, you will break out of the illusion! She's still there? Uh, 
She's gonna very stealthily push open those double, or one of the double doors and try to just like sneak her her body through it to get a peek at the next room. Oh, baby. It's locked. Um, Are you kidding me? <laughs> you couldn't try that before I used the only <laughs> casting of invisibility. <laughs> you pull back the curtain and recording this, it's very late at night. <laughs> <laughs> so can't presume you tried the door. <laughs> I didn't. I never said that I did. Um, can I try? God, I don't have any. Can I try stealth? Can I try to unlock the door? Are you trained in thievery? You have thieves tools. <sighs> I'm un- I'm untrained in thievery. I have a plus two. Um, no. All right. You know what I'm gonna do? I go back into the kitchen and I take two huge pots and I stand on the table invisible and I'm going to throw them at the door. Just (laughs) just throwing That's an aggressive action. You turn visible. No. As the door comes to life, it's a mimic. Uh, (laughs) My face. Uh, You you hock two pans at this door and they just dong, dong, dong. Um, um. Nothing happens. Fuck. There's no one here. It's it embarrassing loud. that I stood on the table. She gets off and walks back into the kitchen and she goes... Well, we wouldn't know. Yeah, well, she pretends that it was cool. You just see yeah. two pans fly through another yeah. room. <laughs> Ethel, those pans? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'm sorry that you wasted this spell upon me. I've failed you completely and utterly. I'm going to sit on the floor in here until we figure something out and I can turn into a bug again and crawl out. We'll need to try the front entrance, I suppose. We'll wait for you. Well, I'm invisible, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to sit here and wallow. Where we've already gone. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to no one. Uh, <laughs> did they turn invisible too? Hello? Fades All out. Right. Fades Let's back go in. back to the port it cell. Says, Ten minutes later. <laughs> okay. And are, is is Suki? Are you staying there in the kitchen? Yeah, you... I'm gonna sit under the table in the kitchen in case anybody comes in. But I'm just kind of looking around at stuff. Okay. It occurs uh, to me we're we waiting also send ten Pepsi. minutes for you to turn back into an animal and then oh. walk out of here with us to the front. And you're gonna oh. walk into the your portcullis as a lizard, right? And see if there's any way to open it from the. Oh, inside. I thought Kate was gonna send Egg in and meet me inside. That's fine. You can both go in. Oh, uh, what, what do you mean, meet you inside? You're going to stay in here the whole time? <sighs> fine, I'm coming out. <laughs> Comes out. <laughs> You're behind a locked door. I think we, Suki <laughs> might just want to be alone for a bit. I think she, she wants to be alone. Suki I think we should let hey, her. you know what? If Sydney, if you don't want to fly out to Boulder, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely wouldn't be involved in anything that happens for the next three sessions. Sorry, <laughs> Suki. You're motionless, invisible <laughs> under this table. <laughs> God, that would be so good if I had to miss a show for some reason and I was I happen to be invisible and in a locked room. And it's yeah. like, don't worry about Suki. She's More fine. More logical than any of the other excuses Honestly, you've come up with. Honestly, I'm right. not sick for once and we having diarrhea. We would probably still give you diarrhea under yeah. that table while of course. invisible. <laughs> Suki comes back out. She goes, sudden onset of horrific diarrhea. <laughs> invisible diarrhea. Suki crawls back out as an insect. And then she turns back into herself and she goes, sorry, I'm having a horrible day. I got shot at with a fireball twice. Why did you it- turn back into yourself? Now we have to wait another 10 <laughs> minutes before you can go through the pure cureless. Why do you insist on driving me mad? <laughs> she couldn't have told us about a terrible day. She's tearing up. She's tearing up. She goes, guys, Don't guys, she had massive diarrhea. <laughs> Did have diarrhea? Is that what's happening? No! And she storms off. Stop yelling at me! Where you are you going? In- Come back. We're invisible. I You're the only one who can help us. <laughs> <laughs> Why? She's Suki, at the point. Wait. I totally get it. It's we're on the moon, and it's probably the pull of the moon that time of. It's that time of the moon. <laughs> yeah. Time yeah. Time of the moon. Of the moon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she gives Eris a hug. Oh. It's okay. Oh. All right, and she turns back into an insect. Let's go. <laughs> right. Ten it's minutes so- later. <laughs> Ten minutes later, you're all at the port colors. <laughs> Uh, where so we started the episode. <laughs> we started we have accomplished ago. 
absolutely nothing. You've revealed some other rooms inside the prison. You found a side entrance. Uh, you we went know through it's a smelly in there. It's smelly. There's a funnel. There's food and liquid being passed between the pantry and the kitchen through this weird, dirty, old, stinky funnel. Uh, and there's a locked door uh, with, with, with what looks like in the middle of the prison. And one thing I didn't mention, I may have mentioned as you were flying in, the way the prison is situated is like there's a second floor uh, and then the far end uh, has like maybe a third floor it kind of it's very um oh, so this is like a complex this yeah is... it is a complex but it's the way it's shaped is so strange because it looks like one continuous chunk of stone that just uh, i think i said it looks like a dead leviathan lying uh near the lake and so that's just to reiterate that's what it looks like oh yeah like. that's so cool also, um, thinking about it, it does make sense that all these doors are locked. It's a fucking prison. Why did I think that they would just open into true. every... Of course they're locked. Well, perhaps they were on the honor system. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we think? Do we think that the, this funnel suggests to me that maybe they're getting food from the outside, but there are no guards? Maybe the guards have abandoned the prison or something? Is, something weird's going on. Yeah, is... Maybe there are no guards in the prison. Maybe it's like automated in some weird way or something. Maybe the prisoners took over. Maybe yeah. the guards are the friends who made along the way. I've got to say. <laughs> Maybe I the guard ex- out front was a prisoner. I didn't expect anything this strange when that dragon took us to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cut that sentence. Maybe that, that guy found That's the a real scrolls. Surprise. <laughs> Maybe that guy found the scrolls like in the prison. Maybe he's like the only person here, but then why is he here? I don't know. Let, let us try to get through uh, through this portcullis. So, all right, so you're back at the portcullis, and uh, you... I, I mispronounced the word seven years ago, and we're still doing it. Still I know. I was that was like, my fault. <laughs> I, I, Wait, I, was I, love, like, but I love doubling down on it. I just love it. Yeah, Wait, you know it, it's Port Cullis, right? Or it's Port Cullis. Yeah, it's yeah. it's Port Cullis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Skid corrected us but, in a very, very early episode of Giants. Yeah, Slayer. I gave them po- bad instructions on how to pronounce it in like episode three <laughs> yeah. of the podcast. He was like, D- actually, I, you are I pronouncing it incorrectly. It oh is Port Cullis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have pronounced it wrong ever since. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, so you're there, and it looks like there is some sort of mechanism that lifts the portcullis, but you don't see where that is. Uh, it's not in the guardhouse. You're looking through there. Maybe it's on inside here past the portcullis. I mean, that would make more sense. Um, but, yeah, what do you want to do? Uh, send, send some people, send yeah. some small Suki, yeah. get in there and start seeing Suki. if you can Pepsi find can it. go with you. Yeah, you can go with the snake and the doll. Uh, yeah, Pepsi will come with me. Do you want to send egg? Um, if you need egg, I'll send egg. Uh, we don't right now, so why don't you hold on to egg? And then I turn into a praying mantis and I ride on Pepsi's back. <sighs> that <Okay>. rocks. <laughs> and I'm at the door. <laughs> and then do you come back into Suki form? Uh, well, I can't open a door as a praying mantis, I assume. That'd be just I'd silly. Turn back. Yeah. Don't get, don't don't get be silly. Ridiculous. Well, wait. Don't well, you need someone to open a door. I'll send. Uh, I'll send egg. Isn't All right, your send egg. Cause this big? it's tiny. Yeah, puppet can. But uh, maybe puppet can stand on snake, and snake can stretch high, <laughs> and then puppet can open door. <laughs> really abandoned all the. Definite and indefinite articles. Lost <laughs> <laughs> access big. to them. Pop it big. Open door. Pop it open door. Stay not snake. I'm going to need a, a real person to try and open the door. A real human Suki being. turns back. Suki boy. turns back into Suki. I'm a real boy. <laughs> I'm a real boy. I open the door. All right, real Suki, go to work. Suki turns back into Suki real quick. I look at the portcullis. Is there a mechanism inside the portcullis door to open it? You don't see anything. God God's sakes. Damn you just, you this just see awful. this. You just see this door to the west. Um, you know what you this is? You don't see any like lever or keyboard. This is a flat out Dark Souls level. That's yep. what this is. Yep. It's like, oh, here's a portcullis right here. And nowhere in sight to open it. 
Yep, and yep. we're about to die 30 times. Yep, four <laughs> uh, hours later, you'll find the way to open it. What's everybody else doing while well, uh, Sook's in there? Atticus is just standing by the portcullis looking through. And you're not invisible anymore, right, Sook? Um, I might. Oh, I'm not? No. 10 minutes, yeah. So oh, that first shit. 10 minutes, it was over. God damn, okay. Um, all right, so you guys are just hanging at the portcullis looking Do at Do you it. want I mean, me to come in there? Do you feel weird? I can use Gash's form and come in there. There'll no, be two of us. It's okay. I, I, I can do this. I just, this is taking a really long time. I thought we would be back on Earth by now. Uh, well. Troy, sorry. Can you, you remind us what was going on in the second level? There was a second level of the prison. Yeah. So it looks like uh, now that uh, you've been inside and you've actually been inside, Ethel, you see the height of the ceiling in that pantry. Uh, you know that there's there's at least another level above, you would think, unless it's just solid stone up there. But then on the far west of the building, it goes up even higher. Um, if I Would I be able to climb up on the thatched roof and then get up on the roof of the main building and see if there is like an open window or a door or something or a crumbled wall? All right, so climbing up on the thatched roof, easy. Um, when you get up there, and I'll just, I'm just going to fast forward through this to save you time. When you get up there, you look at the uh, building itself and there is no discernible handholds to get up higher. It is like so oddly smooth and out of this world that there, there's no, you don't, you can't think of how you would even get up and over to start mounting this beast. Meanwhile, uh-huh. Suki, as you're standing in there with Pepsi, um, looking at the door, you see something on the door that catches your attention. And it it almost looks like it's like it's moving in a way. It's this like pattern that seems to be you know, like my eyes playing tricks on me. You know, it seems to be like moving and you're just drawn to it. Oh, for God's sake. Roll a will save. Oh my God. God. What Ooh. the hell is Why going? is it that they're, they're, they have to have Fascinate in every session of Pathfinder 2E? <laughs> I don't understand why we have to deal with this. You will in just a moment. That's a 29. A 29. Um, let's check something real quick. Okay. Uh, 29. You, uh, you know you don't want to look at this, so you avert your eyes. There is some sort of spell happening on that door, so you look away. Uh, I look what away and talk backward to the group, and I say, the door, the door is, there's a spell on the door. I, it, I don't know how to open it. I, I'm not, I can't look at it. It's, it's drawing me toward it. What do I do? Uh, don't. Just don't look at it and open don't. it. Yeah, stop. And as Suki has her back to you, talking, and you guys are talking to her through the portcullis, you see a kukri appear out of thin air, and then a oh. second kukri just floating there, followed by a third kukri. Oh, and no. they Behind her? Behind her. And they all like rear Shuki. up Whoa. to attack. Roll no. for initiative. Oh, oh my god! god. god. Is They're this just three kukris I see before me. <laughs> what? They're Come. unwielded, the just un- loose in the air. Unwielded kukris. Oh, <sighs> oh my god! <laughs> Suki no! Suki no! Kukri no! Kukri no! <laughs> uh, let's see if I can do this here. Alright. <laughs> oh no. Disembodied kookries. Yeah. On the map. Oh no. Oh, no. What is going on? Three kooks. No. Just a couple of kooks. <sighs> uh, Alright, what many did you. Kooks. <laughs> Too many kooks. Too many kooks. <laughs> What'd you roll, Aldo? Uh, Aldo got a 34. This is insane. Atticus? 29. 29. Eris? Um, 25. 
25. Ethel? 32. 32. Suki? Also a 25. Also a 25. You are in combat. Uh, Aldo, you see these things rear up and you get to act first. Can I do an arcana check to try to see what's going on here? Absolutely. Oh my god, man, I continue to crush it. 38. Ooh. Wow. 38. Okay. It looks like someone or something has cast spiritual weapon three times, mm. and uh. these kufris are appearing, and they, you can tell they're made out of pure force. Okay. Someone, uh, there's a source of this. It's a spell. Someone's cast it nearby. Um, shit. Can I do a perception check to see if I can see the source of this? Any Absolutely. A seek action. Seek action? Uh, that is a 20. A 20. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for one Suki perception check. Suki was very focused on other things. Um, had you taken a moment to take in your surroundings, you may have noticed that there were eight three-inch wide arrow slits on the north and south wall. Wow. Looking into this uh, kill room. Oh. Kill room? Kill room? <laughs> Is that what you called it? Well, it's just very strange, like those arrow slits facing into this room from beyond. All right, Aldo points at the hole. Is it murder holes? There's a wizard on the other side somewhere. And man, I guess that's that's all I can. Yeah, I'm just going to shout those instructions because there's really nothing much more I can do on this side of the portcullis. Yeah, it's very tricky. Um, I, I'm just going to see how this plays out. So uh, now it's Ethel's turn. Okay. Ethel, uh, hearing this, is going to first action hop down from the roof. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forgot you went uh, up there. I appreciate second that. Second and third action, uh, I think he just wants to just grab the portcullis and try to, like, strength it. Like, he's gonna, he doesn't know what else to do. He's just going to try to lift it up. Absolutely. All right. It's going to be an athletics check. Okay. That's good. Make a, make a bend bars, lift gates check. Yeah, bend bars, lift gates. A-D-D. All right. Um. Okay. Okay, that was a natural 17. So that is a 35. Ethel, you reach down. Okay, let me see. 35. Make sure I'm looking at this here. Uh, you reach down and you stick your fingers in the soil of the <laughs> and you like stick it under the soil <laughs> and you just fucking lift it oh, oh my god, my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean your shirt is like ripping as your muscles bulge oh and it's now open you actually opened it yes. straight oh out of the book god, amazing. Sick. oh my wow. god uh, and that's uh, the end of your turn right uh, well, if you're going to say that's one action, I'll spend my third action to go, yep. uh, uh, quickly, because <laughs> I'm holding open the door. Well, you could move into the room if you want as well. I didn't realize oh, you had another It's going to stay yeah, open. Yeah, it's open now. Oh. Oh, great. Oh. Finally. You forced it open. Then, yeah, I'm going to move into the room straight up to one of the murder holes. Okay. Move up. And uh, I see someone waiting to murder us behind the uh, You see, I and mean, then they're only three inches wide, so you just see some, like, a uh, fabric uh, standing there and maybe an eye looking at you. Okay. Sorry, um, three inches wide is pretty wide. And three if there's wide? eight of them, that's like... Nobody knows three inches like Joe. Give me it. Joe, what is it? <laughs> three inches. I always used to have a really firm idea of what three inches was because it was, we were in action figures, three and a half did. inches. Uh, yeah, that's right. Three and a half. Little G.I. Joe's is three and a half inches. Yeah. All right. So all right, you look in there and you see a face uh, that is like uh, half shrouded staring at you with wild eyes. Free action. Stare back. <laughs> that's not hello. Uh, and one of them is going to go. Um, and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to sustain its spell um, to activate 
the Force Kukri. Um, Force Kuk? The Force Kuk, and this is going to be a Kuk against Sook. Kuk against Sook. Kuk against Sook. Kuk against Sook. Um, just looking for my notes here. Okay. Uh, attack roll. Uh, that is going to be a, ooh boy, 32 to hit. Yes. Wowza. Okay. That's going to be, ooh boy, 20 points of force damage. Ooh, With a man. fucking kukri? Oh my God. With a oh. fucking kukri. Uh, 20 <laughs> points of force damage. Um, and then, um, what is the range? range test? Okay. Uh, and then uh, you uh, need to give me a will save. Okay, I'm not looking at the door. No, I know. And okay. That's smart. Glad you did. Nat 20. Ooh, nice. 36. Nice. You're all right. Uh, and you, Joe, you said, why do they always put fascinate in a combat? Because if you are fascinated, you take a penalty to your perception checks, which would have affected her initiative. Um, uh, and if more of you are in there, you know, it just would have slowed you down. That's the only Wait, thing that, that Fascinated goes away. Was that another save against Fascinate, though? No, that was a save against something else. Oh, okay. Uh, that you something don't have? truly horrible. horrible. <laughs> something truly horrible. Uh, it is Atticus's turn. Atticus, the portcullis is open. You see three flying kukri. Um, and I don't... Would I know enough about this? Do I know enough about this spell? What is it? Spiritual weapon? Spiritual weapon, weapon, yeah. That, like, can the weapon be damaged or or stopped in any way without beyond disabling the caster? Uh, Recall knowledge. Uh, But is it divine? Um, No, you could do uh, divine or occult. You can do occult. occult. Yep. Okay. You can always uh, roll Arcana, but in this case, a cult would be fine. I'll do a cult. Uh, that is a 38. Yeah, so it is, uh, in this case, it is a spell that has to be sustained. Um, so if you can take out the caster, then the caster can no longer sustain the spell. Yeah. Um, but the weapon itself is made of pure force, and it cannot be damaged. Unless you have something that can damage force. Which you might. Um, okay. Uh... Atticus is going to m- move up. Um, he's going to move up and... Man, this is brutal. He's got to get... Actually, no. He's not. He's not going to move up. Just looking through this thing, he's going to... This is awful. I mean, when you're in a kill room, it's like it's it's the absolute worst. We have to get out of the kill room. Um, I, I just don't have a means to kill. Pe- so, would it be safe to say that I have line of sight to the enemies for the purposes uh, of spell casting? If you were to move into the room and get close to those eye holes, you know, get within sight of those eye holes, um, you see, um, like where Ethel, Ethel, you're looking to the north. You don't see anybody in that room to the north, but to the south, you do. Oh, Suki. I'm thinking I thought it's you said in the was, back wall. Wasn't that yeah, looking no. directly at somebody? No, the back wall is where the door is. Sorry. Uh, Ethel, I'm sorry. You, I thought you went to the south. I wasn't watching where you went. The uh, Got it. Okay, just so take we away just... the flavor of you looking face-to-face. You were, if you want to move to the south to be right up to the hole, you can. Um Oh, so oh the kill oh I I misunderstood the description the the yeah. murder the murder holes are on the north and south the door yeah. is on the west yes right. I will move uh, to, I will I'll, I'll move to the south to preserve the place sure um Atticus is going to yeah all right so he will move in he will look at these things God this is brutal he's going to deliberately not look at the door he's going to avert his eyes from that since Suki made that clear that there's a spell cast on it um. Uh, and he's going to say, um, I will seal the myrtle holes. Open the door. Get them. And he's going to cast like a wall of stone into the murder holes Neat. that just shump, 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 closes them <laughs> all up with the same material that the wall is made of. Blocking line of sight nice. from them to us. Amazing. That's really right. cool, but it ruined That's- the really cool thing I was going to do. 
<laughs> well, I mean, he can also say behind you, like, it's an illusion. However, <laughs> um, oh. you know, once you break it, they know. So, like, I, I, just, I assume the door's locked, but, like, you know, I don't know what else to do. Okay. All right. So you throw up uh, an illusion, which is a wall of yeah. stone, and you but put he, it but on he, your he, side. He adds on, like, a little perform check, you know, to be like, I'll seal the holes. Go in the door. So, like, maybe they, they won't double check it. You know what I mean? And just think it really is sealed. Because when it closes up, they can't see us anymore. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, okay. And now... All right. So, as you do that... Um, oh, so, they can't see you. Right. I mean, they can interact with it or do a spend a seek action to test if it really is sealed off. You know, mm -hmm. the question is just, would they be dumb enough to assume it is and uh, try to move away from the door or get out of there or something? You know what I mean? Or but would they just they be just, like, I'll poke through it. Even if they knew it. it was an illusion, they still wouldn't be able to see through it, right? Correct. Yeah, well, no, so. no, they, they, they will if they disbelieve it. Oh. But they have to, like, at least spend an action to interact with it, it and like they they wouldn't i don't think they'd be like there's a wall there now they wouldn't poke through the wall they have no right. reason i mean to think knowing you're in a world where wizards can create a wall of stone easily yeah. just like close things off um all right so ethel you see um this is very interesting you see one of uh what looks like three people in this room uh three walk up to the door uh second action open the door and then leave that room um awesome and then it is, uh, you see another one do the exact same thing, except it doesn't, uh, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't, uh, which McCall doesn't have to open the door because the door is open. So there's only one remaining in that room. And now it's Eris's turn. Um, did you say uh, we can hit the cookeries with force damage and then they'll stop being? No, I said, unless you have something that can damage force, which your spell would say like, this damage is force, and I, yeah. I didn't think you would then. Well, because magic missile has the force trait. Effects with this trait deal force damage. Right, but that, that's presupposing that force kill damages force, and I don't know if that's necessarily true. You would need to have something that like says in the descriptor it damages force. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know if that exists in the game. Um. So, but these uh, uh, also quick quick note on those kukris. Did they sustain the spell? Yeah as part um, of this opening the door floating. and leaving. Yeah, like so they, no, they didn't. They uh, they couldn't attack with it because they couldn't see you and they sustained it the previous round. So now at the end of this turn, uh, two of the kukris disappear. <laughs> okay, oh, nice. so two of the awesome. kukris disappear and there's one left. Mm -hmm. um, okay. If you have disintegrate, that would probably work. I don't yeah, have disintegrate. disintegrate, something like that. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna cast haste on Ethel. Yes. Nice. Uh, mark that. And then, um, I'm still worried about the kukri. It did a, a good amount of damage to uh, Pepsi. Not Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading on the thing. Sure Not did. Pepsi. Suki. <laughs> um, so I'm going to cast Needle of Vengeance. Uh, so she reaches out and she like says your name, like Suki. I got you, girl. Um, <laughs> so she casts a little vengeance on you. So if anything like hits you, or no, wait, it takes it's mental a, damage. Yeah, and it's a kookery. But the person would take it who's casting the spell, would they? Right. I mean, guess they're the ones that are hurting, attacking me. you. Yeah. Um, right. So, well, he, here's the problem. Um, right. We've been doing needle of vengeance wrong. Needle How? of vengeance is a targeted spell. You must target yes. an enemy. Oh. Mm -hmm. I target one enemy. This says a long jagged needle jabs into the target's foe psyche. Target foe's psyche. I'm yes. supposed to name a specifically forbidden creature and myself or one of my allies. The target takes 10 mental damage anytime it uses a hostile action. Oh, this wording is confusing. Does yours say target's foe or target foes? Target foes. Yeah, so. Yeah, it is worded weird, but yeah, it's, uh, it, you're targeting an enemy, and then whenever okay. they try to attack, they uh, uh, they get that needle damage. Yeah, so you pick one enemy, and whenever that enemy attacks whoever you name, they take damage. All right, well, delete that then. 
Um, Turnable? That's cool. You can hide in that too. That's a cool spell. Yeah. That is cool. So, okay. So, I spent two actions casting haste, and I'm going to spend one more action raising shield. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's smart. You don't know what, what's going it's on such here. Such a yeah. weird, awful, terrible situation. I have run these like once or twice like designed kill rooms against PCs and you're just like as a GM I'm even like I have no idea how they're going to get out of this like <laughs> well designed kill rooms are awful yeah I ran one in Jade Region now that I'm thinking about it in the uh, in book four um, I also want ago. to spend a, a free action uh, for Eris to ovulate after she saw Ethel uh, lift <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think about that. That definitely <laughs> needed an action. Like as soon as as soon as Troy said his shirt rips, I was like, I, "Oh, Eris is like unable to do a combat." Now. Yeah. <laughs> Moon rolls. Moon I think rolls. you're stupefied. One. Yeah, you're fascinated. Somehow you're fascinated. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I should said, say, "Don't look at the door." The uh, that <laughs> that hypnotic pattern that was on the door wasn't sustained either, so it's no longer there. If you oh. side eye. Oh, it. awesome! Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, it is now Suki's turn to end the round. Yeah. Come Suki on. sees, peeks at the door, and notices it's not there, and goes, "Booyah!" And she kicks the door open, <laughs> <laughs> and the your foot just <laughs> boom, it stops right on oh. its heavy metal door. Ow! <laughs> Ow. Uh, uh, it appears to be locked. Uh. Okay. Get the door open! I tried! It's locked! Um, I don't have thieves tools. I'm not trained in thievery. I'm not that strong. Um, I also think you stood the knife. What was that? You stood on the knife. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, point of order, you stood on the knife. <laughs> um, I have a question. Uh, I was looking at my Dispel Magic. It's only a level two, so I just want to make sure this is correct if I try to cast it. It's my base bonus and ability bonus is the spell casting DC that you would go against, correct? Well, attempt a counteract check against low. the target if you successfully counteract a magic item, the item. No, we're not doing that. Um, so it's just a counteract check against the target, which is this, which is me, the spell caster. Oh, so um, I'm making the the check. Yeah, you're making the check, just like Atticus did uh, last week. So I'm rolling and adding... Uh, what? Joe, what did you use for I your I used my spell attack roll, which is essentially your your proficiency bonus plus your primary casting stat. What, you know, do you have any ca spells that you cast at people that are attacks? That, yeah. That, that don't require a save? Yeah. So what, what is that number? It should be like plus 15 for you probably, plus 16, something yeah, like that. It's yeah, plus, it's plus 16. Yeah. So then I'm just rolling a d20 and doing the plus 16? I guess. What are you trying to do? Counteract? Dispel magic. I'm trying to dispel the uh, oh, kukri. Okay. The kukri. Great. All right, and dispel magic is a level two spell. Yes. Um, so you're using that as the, the number. For the counteract. Yeah, yeah, for the counteract. All right, so go ahead. Roll plus and plus 16. Oh, Natty 18 plus 16. 34. Yes. Uh, all right, so you rolled a 34, and so it's going to be against the DC of the caster, right? Yeah. Um, this is amazing what you guys are doing to this encounter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so that is enough to dispel the kukri. Oh, that is so oh, cool. Beautiful. <laughs> God, remember how hard it was in 1E to ever use dispel magic, to dispel yeah. anything. Never worked. Yeah, so well, spiritual cool weapon is worked. a second level spell. So, I mean, it, oh. couldn't, have, it couldn't have been easier. Um, yeah. Perfect. Unless I did uh, something wrong, but yeah, no, second yeah. and second. That's my whole turn. I tried to kick the door and then I dispelled it. And then uh, she turns around, she says, someone get this door open quick. Move out of the way. Someone okay, get yeah. this door open quick. <laughs> All right, it's round two, um, and it's Aldo's turn. I'm just gonna, gonna, I'm gonna delay. Yeah. Okay, and it's delay, what is that again? Is it uh, one action or two actions? Free. Free. It's, it's free. free. It's the same as- yeah, I'm thinking uh, of ready, sorry. Ready is two yeah, actions. ready yeah. is two actions. Uh, Ethel. <clears throat> uh, do I see any of the guys in the room still through this murder hole? There's one. Okay. Ethel is going to first action draw his hatchet. 
Okay. Second action, throw it through the murder hole at the guy. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right, I'm going to give him a little bit of cover. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give him standard cover, actually. Uh, but fire away. Got good aim. Fire away. Fire away. Uh, that's going to be a 24 to hit. That was a miss. Okay, the hatchet returns to my hand. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I it throw it, it again. returns with wise and doesn't fit through the murder hole. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so you I'm catch gonna... it and fucking fire it back? Amazing. It again, yeah. So cool. <laughs> uh, this one's going to miss too. Uh, 21. Yeah. 21 was a miss, yeah. Okay, that is my. those are my actions. Is the door open yet? All right, well, you see uh, the third one. Uh, run out of the room. So the guy who just threw the hatchet at also runs out of the room. Coward! Coward! <laughs> uh, Come and back, you coward! It is Atticus's turn. Uh, Atticus is going to step up and attempt to disable the device. All right, and you're a master in, uh, excuse me, you are trained in thievery and have thieves' tools, right? Correct. Uh, I don't know if the lock requires an expert at this level. I was wor- I'm worried this that might be the particular one. Uh, let's let's roll a check and see what happens. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, that is a twenty-six. You went too quickly. Uh, twenty-six. Now you know. Uh, I'm sure you know. Uh, oftentimes, when you're trying to pick locks. You have to yeah. do multiple successful totally. checks, and criticals give you two successes. In this case, you have one success um, towards picking the lock. It seems to be working. I, I right. just need a moment. Yeah, it's like the little fucking <laughs> yeah. tumbler. What is Tumblers. it called? The, yeah, tumblers. You got one. Work the lock. Work the lock. Um, <laughs> I'll tumbler for you. <laughs> I'll tumbler for you. <laughs> do you have any other actions yet? Can you do another check? Um, actually, I I forgot because I'm. Not very good at this. It is a 27. If that happens to be a crit, I highly doubt it. Um, it is not. Okay. Uh, I forgot the item bonus. All right. Um, no, that was it. I uh, Disabling device is two actions. So it's not like you can just like one action disable, one action disable, one action disable. Oh, man, that's it, brutal. It's yeah. brutal. Trying to brutal. do it in combat. I mean, it's that's supposed what to be non-combat. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It does um, make sense, though. Like, it's, you know, uh, come on. It's Vasquez. Like, yeah, sealing the door, right? Rock. It's just like. Yeah. Well, that's Even what that makes is this reverse. That's right, no, it's, thing. it's reverse, but it, but you can feel that pressure. He's like, hurry up. He's like, I'm working yeah. on it. Hurry up. Yeah. I'm, tra- I'm going. You know what I mean? It's just like, it can only go. And it's yeah. such precise work. Uh, all right. Well, that's what makes it so cool is because like if you're trapped in here and you're just getting hacked and spelled through these murder holes and you can't even open the door uh, or you're making these checks one round at a time to try and break through to see what's going on. Uh, but the good news is uh, they have left the room. And the one that just ran out readied an action uh, and uses those two actions right now to open the door. Oh, uh, okay. magic is ah. now. Oh, what are those? Uh, let's take a peek at uh, foes that you have fought several times now, but oh. these ones look a little bit different and you're level nine. So can you curb stomp them or do they have more to give? Uh, right out the gate, the one standing right at the door goes to cast a spell on Atticus. Give me a fortitude save. Touches you. Fortitude save. Um, trying to see if I have any juice here. Um, uh, okay, I will roll the fortitude save. Natural one. Oh, oh Joe. Oh, Joe. You are You're quite ice cold. Yeah, I'm um, quite ice cold, and I presume that the, is there a new hero point? Uh, new session. New yeah. Fresh. It's a new it's episode. It's a new session. It's, yes. it's the same sort of combat, but I don't know. Uh, same sort of combat. It's I say a yes. New episode. I give yeah. myself a new one every episode. Yes, I will say, uh, and I mentioned this uh, offhanded to Joe the other day, we will not be doing this in Gatewalkers. The arrow points are going to be very, very different. Um, one would say non existent. Cue the Matthew eye roll, which is so warranted. It's really almost non existent. Jared um, would give it to us. Yeah, Jared would give it to us. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to reroll it, go ahead. 
you you have the in this current iteration of the game you have a hero point every in that case i will use it uh, which by the way would now. be every hour and a half you get a hero <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it doesn't work quite as well uh, as the game intends you're not supposed to get a hero point every hour on the hour <laughs> when you play but uh well, you're not supposed to do this on tv so that's true <laughs> that's true uh that is now a 20 Five. Okay. Fail, not a critical fail. Uh, so you'll take 17 points of damage from a heightened chill touch. Oh, <laughs> dear. Chill touch. That would have been uh, 34 points of damage. Woo! Instead, uh, a measly 17. Um, and that was the one uh, right here to the south. Uh, the uh, I'm going to take that- my turn now. Okay. Um, the one to the south opened the door? No, the one to the north opened the door here. And, and that, this one. Oh, that was a red eat action. So that, yeah. was, that was the end of his turn. Okay. Yeah, and then go ahead, Aldo. You're good. Well, okay. Uh, hold on. Sorry. So his turn is over because he only took two actions. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I, I want to stay there on the other side of the door. Okay. Okay. Aldo, uh, he's going to throw a bottled lightning at the dude yes. in the middle. Yes! Okay. Uh, okay, that is a 29 to hit. 29 to hit. Let's see the tabs I have going on. I, I, don't, I do not envy you right now. <laughs> 29 to hit is a hit. Okay, awesome. Bottled lightning. Thunderstruck! Uh, oh, nice. Okay, that is... Oh, come on, man. Okay. (laughs) That is... That is 15 points of damage. Uh, four points of splash damage to the guys on either side. Uh, And the guy in the middle is flat-footed. Awesome. Okay. I am now, with my second action, going to throw a dread ampule at the guy in the middle. Uh, oh man, crushing it. Uh, that's a 28 against flat footed. That should be a hit. 28 against flat footed is a hit. <gasps> wow. Okay. Oh, amazing. Nice. Uh, oh, max damage. Oh. Uh, that is 16 points oh. of mental damage. <laughs> uh, four points of mental damage to either guy on the side of him. Oh, <laughs> and the guy mental in the middle. splash damage. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Like, how does that manifest? <laughs> oh, oh. It's just like a shockwave of. Brain pack. They just like, see the. It's, it's empathetic pain. You just see. Yeah, it's like a shock range. wave of cringe humor. <laughs> uh, oh. And he is frightened. One, the guy in the middle, as well as flat-footed. Okay. And uh, with my final action, I am going to give. I'm going to use my occult pendants and give guidance to Ethel. Guidance mm. to Ethel. Uh, amazing. All right, it is the uh, Denizen of Lang's turn. You just fuck up. Uh, and he is going to, uh, he's actually going to stand right there uh, and uh, cast a spell on Atticus. Uh, so, Atticus, give me a will save. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yes! Did you say will save? A. <laughs> Did. That's 34. Ooh! 34. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so that is a uh, success. Um, so in terms of damage, you're going to take... Uh, all right, so I cast Phantom Pain on you. So it's full initial, but no persistent. Uh, so in this case, uh, full initial... <laughs> Do you remember when you interpret that, uh, interpreted that as max I, damage? Max, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I remember. Full that. initial. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to, I have to roll it. Um, all right, so that's still going to be eight d four damage. Wow! Holy um, poop! On a success. That I, yeah, which is something I wasn't doing correctly in the past. Uh, that's twenty three points of damage, uh, um, and you don't get the persistent damage on a success, and the spell ends immediately. So you just feel That's a great like, spell. Is that an illusion spell? I need. I, I need. It's a phantom pain. Phantom pain. Yeah, it is a uh, illusion, mental, non lethal. Yeah, illusion. Yeah, I must, you need that must, spell in your must life. Get that spell. Yeah, it's fucking great. And I mean, I've been using it left and right, and not even dealing the full damage. Um, and on a failure, that persistent is brutal. I mean, it fucked up Ethel in 
several combats in the past. Uh, all right, so that was uh, his two actions. And, and likewise, I just uh, I want to stay there right now. I'm not going to spend a third action. Uh, actually, no, I might as well just take an attack because um, I haven't used the attack trait. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, just try and stab you with a kukri. Uh, and that's going to be a 30 for kuk. Yeah. All right, that is going to be uh, 16 points of regular slashing damage plus Jesus. 1d6 persistent bleed. Oh, he's going down. Those kukris are he's going down. Uh, all right. Oh, man. Brutal. 1d6 persistent bleed. This is a very interesting combat that has taken a, a, a weird turn here, but I still think you guys have the upper hand. Um, it is now Eris's turn. Damn it. Um, okay. <laughs> Shut. So I need to move because a lot of my spells, I just need to be closer and I'm just not sure what I want to do. So I see that Atticus hit the one in the middle. That's great. I also see these guys have like rock candy stabs. Um, they do. do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are they like- Let's Stir that into a cup of coffee. Different in any way? <laughs> they also, did they all have like weird pincer mouths? Uh, yeah, and you've seen this before. Like when they when they lower their veils, they kind of look like Baraka from Mortal Kombat. If that reference means anything. No. Google it. Um, so I'm wondering. Well, Alina? no, no, that's not. So I need to move up at least to here to do things okay. that I want to do. So you move and just into the kill room to the north of the entrance. Yeah. So and then I also want to take out my staff which I never use because I forget about it but I have a staff of necromancy with like skulls and cool cool stuff on it um, nice. but that's an action so um, before I do what I want to do with it I'm going to use my final action to try to demoralize the one that's like directly to the west of me in a straight line um, with my intimidating glare. So without even words, I just take out my staff, point it directly at it, give it a good glare. Just because uh, it's not clear here on the, uh, the John ski, uh, the only one you can see because of the door is the one that's right in front of Atticus. So just demoralize that one. Okay, I'll demoralize that one. Oh, but that's only going to give you what, what? Frightened one? Yeah, he's already already so, yeah, so yeah, I, the door I, here is very artistic, but it's not really clear. Like there's only it's only a five foot door in front of I Atticus. take back okay. my compliment on the map. <laughs> <laughs> this map sucks. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Um well, shit. That Dave um, map was full of shit. Yeah. You gotta change your name now. What the heck <laughs> do I want to cast on it then? Let's Look see, what here. do I got here? Uh, you know what? Go ahead and do it. I'm looking at the original map, and that is it is a 10-foot door that kind of overlaps the space. is weird, so that's fine. Go ahead and demoralize. Yeah. I'm going to try to demoralize you with my gaze. Natural 17. A 17, so that's a 34. Ooh. Uh, he is demoralized. Um, nice. nice. Frightened one. Frightened one like his buddy to the south. All right. Um... ETT's giving me a little trouble here, but I will get that on shortly. In the meantime, it's Suki and Pepsi's turn. Suki and Pepsi are at it again. Um, <laughs> Suki is going to cast Electric Arc uh, at the two, uh, one in the middle and the one to the south. And oh. uh, is it, oh no, you have to make a reflex. Sorry, 25 DC. Uh, DC 25 reflex save. Let me just see here what their reaction situation. Attack you for casting a spell. No, you're good. All right, so a couple reflex saves. All right, the one in front of Atticus rolls a 24, uh, and the one below rolls a 31. Ooh. Okay, um, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of damage to, oh, 11, 12, 13 points of damage to the one that failed, and half of that to. Six. Yeah, because it's not a crit success. So yeah, just half of that. That damage seems low. Is that because it's not heightened? It's, oh, actually, sorry. It's one more D4. I have four in front of me, but it's five. Okay. Uh, 
It's three. What did I say? Add three to what I said. Six, okay, so, Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, so three more damage and one more damage, essentially. Uh, yeah. So not no, a ton. It's Sixteen but, and eight now. Gotcha. So okay. two more damage to the one that's saved. Perfect. Every point counts. And then for that, those were two actions for my third. Uh, and uh, Pepsi's going to slither on in and attack the one in the center that's flat-footed. Okay, that would he would have to use a uh, tumble-through action to walk through people. You can walk through your ally. You have to use a tumble-through action to walk through an enemy. Even as a snake? Even as like a tiny creature? He's not yeah, a tiny he's creature. Not tiny. He's, he's the size small. of a halfling. It's the size of a hobbit. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I think he's technically small in the game, yeah, so. Yeah. If he was tiny, I didn't think tiny, I think. He can't move through, I don't know, maybe. Me, he did. Uh, okay, so then, it, would that be a move action and then he has to take a second action to get in there, you're saying? Tumble through is an action. No, uh, part of the movement is the tumble is the tumble through action. But Got Yeah. It. So it's, uh, what is it, athletics against? It's acrobatics, acrobatics. Excuse against me, yeah. reflex DC. Okay. Right. Okay, so, so we're acrobatics. Would be athletics. That's, he's really good at acrobatics. That's your natural 18 to, uh, for a 32. Yeah, you get through with ease. <laughs> Which that's you should. Awesome. And that's cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, so now you're back there and you're flanking with uh, Atticus, but that's your final action, right? Or no, you have three actions. No, I, I only have two actions. It's the move and then that was his second. I made a mistake. He gets two actions. His action, his third action is like my command of him. We share that action, so... Well, I had to read a bunch of rules. You know, Wait, why can't Pepsi attack? Uh, he only gets two actions. We share like the command animal. As he moved. He moved. He took the. Oh no, you're right. He should get his attack. Yeah. 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 I think you get one attack, and uh, this guy's already flat-footed. So. Tumble through is not an additional action I to thought... the stride. You stride as part of a tumble through action. Right. Got yeah. it. You were trying to trick me, Troy. Uh, yeah. Stop <laughs> trying to fool people. Uh. <laughs> That's going to be 27. 27 uh, in this state is a hit. Nice. Woo! What a chomp, difference. Chomp. Ninth level makes. Yeah. That's 10 points of piercing damage as the snake nice. bites your awesome. gross leg. Nice. Ah! All right, Sook. Uh, that is the end of that round. And it is now Ethel's turn. Ethel, you get up and mash. Um, can I, will you allow me, if I stand in this northern spot, will I be able to mash this guy uh, in the center? Yes, looking at going back to the original Pathfinder map, you would be able to see him. Uh, it's just here, it's, it's like I no, said. No, the guy in the center, artistic. he said. The guy in the, oh, the guy in the center from the north? Yeah, for sure. Okay. He stood to I'm, the north of Atticus. Yeah, so I'll step to the north of Atticus. I'll drop my, drop my um, hatchet ah. and draw my war hammer with the other hand, so I have the scimitar and the war hammer out. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do a double slice. Nice. Double slice. Double slice. Twice is double nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm going to use a hero point. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice oh, one. No. Okay. That's much better. Okay. Uh, so with the war hammer, that's going to be a 28 to hit. And the scimitar is going to be a 35 to hit. Oh, uh, man. Two hits. Uh, double slice, double slice. It's got to be a near crit on this second. Yeah, was it a crit? Wait, uh, you said 35? It's flat footed. He's flat footed. The second one is a crit. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Right. Yeah. So so it up. Warhammer damage is 16 points of bludgeoning. Okay. And then with the scimitar, let's get a couple of d6s. Uh, 20 points of damage on the scimitar. He's very, very dead. Yeah! Yeah, yeah kill these guys. <laughs> amazing. He's dead. First, that, that body falls to the ground. Um, amazing. Uh, do you still have an action left? Nope. Move. Double slice. Okay, and number... Uh, okay, so the one that is now standing right next to you, Ethel, uh, will... Uh, will cast a spell. Oh, actually, that would provoke. Yeah, he's going to do it anyways. He's going to cast a spell on you, so go ahead and uh, take your attack of opportunity. Doing the, the attack of opportunity with the scimitar. I, oh, come on. Oh, this would be so beautiful. Come on. No. Uh, oh. That is, however, 27 hit. 27 hits. Okay, uh, that'll be 11 points of damage. 
Okay, 11 points of damage. Now give me a will save. For, excuse me, fortitude save. Fortitude. Forty. Uh, Natty 19, uh, 38. 36, 36. 36 or 38? 36. And my DCs go down because of Frightened as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So that is a critical success. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! And that all goes back to Eris and her demoralized. One, two, we're such a great team. Uh, yeah, he's, he steps back. He, um, he, Ethel looks back at you, and in the like, the, you see like his muscles ripple through the rips in his shirt. <laughs> he's like, thanks. The other Philippian oh tube God. also ovulates. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happens. Oh, man. Is that That's how it works? That's definitely how it works. That's, That's just works. science. There's two <laughs> tubes, so. There's weird things going on in the moon. <laughs> 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 we are in a dreamland. That's true. true. <laughs> All right, there are two of these denizens of Lang left. You guys are uh, obviously a lot more powerful now. Uh, it is Atticus's turn. Took a beat in there. Yeah, Atticus is on death's door. Uh, he stumbles back uh, behind Ethel, uh, grateful for Ethel's uh, brawn and protection, and he immediately casts invisibility on himself. Just, just vanishes. He's got to get out of there. And he will then roll a. Uh, do you want me to roll the d6 or do you want to roll uh, it? I rolled it. You take two points of damage. You can roll the recovery check. I will roll the recovery check. 15. Nice. Natural 15. Amazing. Nice. Uh, Amazing. All right. That wasn't bad at all. Just an extra two points of damage. Not too bad at all. You're no longer bleeding. Okay. Um, all right. It is the other Denizen of Lang's turn. Where is he? Down the bottom. Uh, yeah. All right. He is going to uh, slide to flanking. No, he's going to stay right there, and he is going to touch Suki. Suki, give me a fortitude save. Oh boy. You deuce. Oh boy. Zoinks. Oh fudge. <laughs> Except she didn't say fudge. Six, <laughs> nice one, Troy. <laughs> Sixteen, she says nervously. Sixteen. Final answer? Yes. Final answer means you cannot use your hero point. That is a critical fail. Oh, oh. I should have used my hero uh, point! Uh, okay. You're going to be oh, fine. Just... It's just damage. You'll be fine. I'm so hurt. Oh, are you really very hurt? No, I'm healed up, but I'm about to be back where I started. All right, let's see here. This is what Atticus staved off. Uh, it is going to be 26 points of cold damage. Ooh, okay. As yeah, honestly, says, the 34 I would have taken, like, I don't I don't think I would have spent the euro point if I knew that that's what it was. Yeah, it's not terrible. It still stings. Ow! Uh, and then he goes to swing his kukri at you for good measure and rolls a 29. Uh, oh, my hero I was freaking out. Uh, that hits. All right, that's going to be 15 points of regular damage, or slashing damage, I should say, and you are bleeding. Ugh. These guys still pack a nice little pow. Um, so you got to kill them before they kill you. Sorry, what was that? Da- sorry, what was the damage? 15 points 15. of slashing, and then you'll take bleed on your turn. Aldo, you're up. All right, Aldo is going to do the same sequence again going to toss a bottle of lightning at the guy that just attacked Suki. I can't believe this. Natural 19. That is a 36 to hit. Yes. Uh, All right. He is not flat-footed, but that is a hit. Okay. Uh, He'll be flat-footed very soon. uh, Okay. That is seven points of electric damage. Is no... Other enemies uh, within hit the splash range, so that's it. But he is flat-footed now, and now against his flat-footed AC, I am going to attempt to throw a dread ampule. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna do a hero, my hero point, which I haven't even used one in several episodes. You haven't. You can rest assured. That <laughs> uh, did not do much better. Okay, so that is a that is a miss. Uh, that is a. That is a 14 to hit. Okay, that um, would be um, a, a critical fail, which means he won't take the splash damage. That's right. And, um, yep, 
Uh, and then with my final action, I am going to use the Occult Pendant, this time to give guidance to Suki. Oh, thank you. And I think it was a, I did it before, but that was that was over an hour ago, I believe. So yeah, um, it should it should be able to be you should be eligible for my guidance. Again. Yeah, that was in the last combat, and you guys did take an hour between combats. Uh, great, it is Eris's turn. All right, um, there's two of my friends in my line now of what I was going to do last time with my staff. I'm gonna keep my staff in my one hand though and not do what I was gonna do. I'm gonna cast Guidance on myself. One action. Reach out to the Babiaga. Please help me. (laughs) Um, And then I'm going to spend two actions to cast. Whoop whoop, spirit object on the rock candy staff that the dead guy was the rock candy holding. staff. Nice. <laughs> it's so the rock, the rock candy, candy staff, staff grows chicken legs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> points itself at the denizen <laughs> right next to it and just jams itself at it. All right, so if you cast it on something that someone is holding, does that make any difference? Like if he's I mean, holding it. Is he it. holding it if he's dead? Oh, you're talking about the dead guy. Yeah, right, the, the one that guy. dropped onto the I ground. I got you. All right, so you're animating his, his with the weapon that fell oh, out I of his like hand. The, I like where your head's at, Troy. I like the idea of somebody holding a spear or a staff and then being like, oh my God! Oh, God. 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 <laughs> chicken legs come out of it. Yeah, no. So even, thanks for that. <laughs> even better. All right, so you, yeah, you, so you're going to attack the guy to the south. Go so ahead and roll the attack. It's going to make a melee attack. I'm going to do, um, I mean, bludgeoning seems to make sense on the guy and it's a spell attack roll. Yeah, and he's flat footed thanks and to he's skin. Flat footed and I've got guidance. Natural 18. Yes. So I that's, that's a, a 36. A 36. With my plus one. That's a critical hit. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Kate's headphones flew off her head <laughs> in the celebration. <laughs> oh god, what does that mean? Okay, wait, hold on. I just Chicken <laughs> right. staff. Um so it's 5d4 plus 4, so it's double that, right? For a critical yeah, success. It's 5d4 plus 4, and then it's, double it. Yeah. It takes double damage. I think that's all that happens. Um, I don't have 5d4. I'm using the computer. Where you roll it online? Oh, yeah, do it on the computer. Yeah, you go. 13, so that's 26 total. Double. Amazing. Well, 5d4, nice. 5d4 plus 4? 5d4 plus 4 is 13. It automatically like adds it all together. Oh, it adds the plus 4. Um, so 26 all together of damage. damage. Awesome. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> chicken rock candy is back. Hell chicken yeah. rock candy. Now you need a new t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, amazing. Suki, you have guidance and you are up. All right. Suki is going to... Whoa. Uh, Suki is going to use electric arc. Um, mm-hmm. She's going to take a step back towards the center. She did not, for, before she cast that, she did not like getting hit by the rock candy spear. Yeah. Um, and she is going to cast electric arc on both of these Johns. Here we go. <laughs> nice, Sid. <laughs> Make a reflex save. Yes, reflex save. Uh, both of these Johns. Uh, all right, the one to the south. Oh no, 26. And the one to the north, uh, 31. Okay, so they same both- Same as last time. Yeah, same rolls as last time. No, the one to the south passes this time. He rolled the 24 last time. Um, but they are gonna take half damage of my little D4s. That's a four, five, six, seven. Suki, never, never mind. Eight, nine, 10. Can't read that dice is so dark. 13, uh, so half a 13, which is at five. Uh, no, six. Uh, six. And they both take it, because they both yep. passed. Yep. Okay. They both take it. Step back, two action, electric arc, and we kick it to the next round. Ethel. Come on, smash, Ethel. Come on, Ethel. Ethel. House, please. Bring us home. Okay, Ethel is going to uh, step in, uh, standing atop the body of the last denizen he felled. You know what, now uh, he, that you're in there, I can show you some more of the room. Uh, oh, please. You can see that uh, hallway stretches down to the south. 
uh, and there are uh, two doors. One that is open uh, right here, uh, about you know, 15 feet away from you. That's probably, you would assume, the room that they came out of. Uh, and then another small door to the south. Great. Um, all right. Ethel is going to first go after the denizen to the south. Um, okay. It's. Ooh, I'm going to double slice. I'm, gonna, I'm assuming this guy has some hit points left. Okay. Hatch, uh, Warhammer, and Scimitar. Here we go. Been hot. Crack die. Flat footed. Uh, okay. Um, that's going to be for the Warhammer. That's a 30 to hit. For the yep. scimitar, that is a scimitar is a plus 18, uh, 25 to hit. Uh, a hit, and because of flat footed, a hit. Nice. That's beautiful. So exactly a hit. Because well, of uh, Ooh. 16 points of bludgeoning damage, minimum damage, and uh, eight points of slashing damage. Okay. How's he looking? He's, he's like he's on his last legs. Okay, he's flat-footed. I'm going again with the... Oh, more damn. Okay, I'm going again with the Warhammer. Okay. Natural 20. Oh, oh my god! god. You've got to be kidding me! <laughs> yes. Serious? You've got to be kidding me. But you wouldn't have wanted to waste the beheading on an uh, enemy with a guy on, on his last legs, legs you know? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh, god. <laughs> That's <laughs> one day. That's so painful. It's going to happen, day. man, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay. Uh, all right, so... You. It's it's going to kill him. Uh, but 19, let's see. Nineteen points of bludgeoning damage. Should I cave his head in? Well, you rolled a crit, didn't you? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. thirty-eight yeah. points. Of I just want to see damage. if there's any extra effects. He's knocked prone. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh, I bet he is. I bet That's he the is. least of his worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is dead. But um, we should do a fan crit just to make sure you don't have any bonus Johns. Oh wait, I'm a, I'm a. It was a natural 20. Right so I, completely, I completely forgot. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, this one from Eden in Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Eden. Dang. Melbourne. Okay. Eden. okay. Melbourne. Boomerang. White. Deal double damage to your intended target. Your weapon is temporarily imbued with the returning weapon property. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, make a free ranged strike against any enemy within 30 feet at the same multiple attack penalty as the previous strike, which okay. is your full uh, attack. This well, range no, is whatever the that was. Oh, that's attack, right. So. This range so is not. Just fucking throw the warhammer. I'm gonna, now. I'm gonna fucking throw the warhammer yes! at the other guy's head. This is like an X Men fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just just coming in really. Yeah. Just just is so cool. I remember fight. I sealed the wall yeah. earlier. It's like it's totally X Men fight. Well, it's like Thor. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Right yeah. Yeah. It all comes totally. back to Thor. Ethel Except is in full beast mode. Yeah, well, Ethel I just is a natural killing one. it. Oh, you just roll a natural one. Oh, no. Oh, I spoke oh. too soon. <laughs> God. 20. But that doesn't count on a fumble because it was like part of the crit, right? Yeah, you can't attack. fumble on a crit, right? It's only up to one person on this call. I mean, of course, we have. To. It was an attack. We have to see what happens. Now. Do I confirm um, the? Do I confirm the fumble? I can't yeah. remember what our rules are. No, no, we, we just make them up as we go. <laughs> <laughs> this one from Joe Talavera, Joseph Talavera, in Seattle, Washington. Hi, Joseph. Joe's gonna roll. Okay. What? The gods that hold your fate in their hands are imperfect and often fumble themselves. Joe makes all of your rolls for the next 1d4 <laughs> rolls. <laughs> oh my god, he gets the morphal kill. <laughs> That's so, the most brutal fumble what, we've had. What if Joe rolls the 20 on If the, I roll the vorpal 20. That's what I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to happen. All right, Joe, roll a d- I'm going to have you roll the d4 to see how many rounds. All right. D4. Three the, rounds. All right, so presumably the, the end the of the combat. The remainder of the combat. The oh, my combat. God. This is hilarious. Uh, okay, and that was your last action. So now... Just put my uh, dice away. <laughs> see here. It is my denizen's turn, uh, and he is right next to you, Ethel. The Warhammer does come back into my hand. It, <laughs> yeah, does. it does. It has uh, returning. It already had the returning property, right? Oh, no, 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 that was the I see you oh, I didn't realize that. I thought it already had that property. Okay. Um, okay, he is just going to uh, start with a uh, Kukri attack. Ugh, brutal. 25 to hit. Miss. Miss. And then uh, Kukri again uh, at 2. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to attack three times here just to get it out of the way. Right, that's a daddy 19. Um, but uh, at a, it's agile. Sorry. Um 
range. 25 to hit? No. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's his turn. That's the last guy. Rough shape. It is Atticus's turn. Um, man, this is... Atticus is... He was going into full self-preservation mode, but we, we, ha- we have to stop playing this episode. Uh, yeah. So he is going to do his best to deal damage. So he's <laughs> going to come out of invisibility with almost no hit points and do a um, telekinetic projectile at the guy in the back corner. Okay. And just try to hit him. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Miss. God damn it. Natural five. Uh, and that's his turn. Uh, and that's his turn. And oh, I saved on the persistent before, so I'm good. Okay, Aldo. All right, Aldo is going to... And you're to... no longer invisible. Step up into the room, uh, edging his way past Atticus next to Suki to get a clear view of the final remaining guy. And he's going to do his normal thing. He's going to throw a bottle of lightning. Oh, that's a that's a 19 to hit. That's, a, that's not good. No, nope, you get the splash. Uh, okay, so that is five points of splash damage. Okay. And he's going to throw another bottle of lightning. Uh, 20. Um, so that's another five splash damage. Okay, that adds up. And that's it. Okay, that's Aldo's turn, and now it is Eris's turn. All right. Um, I'm telekinetic projectiling at it. So let's go. Let's see. Let's see what you got. That's a natural nine. So that's a 26 to hit. 26 with the Wait, frightened. No, uh, that's not math. Actually, he's 17. not frightened anymore. It's 23. Oh, that's a mess. I'm going to use my hero point. Okay. <laughs> okay. God, I'll I use rolled it. a nine again. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Frick. Um, uh, okay. One more action. Well, so that didn't work. I've got one more action left. Um, what can I do? Uh, Frick. It's, oh, I didn't demoralize it, have I? Or no, that, it doesn't have any uh, buffs on it. Any debuffs? Yeah, no, you can try to demoralize it now. It already lost gonna, its fright. I'm gonna demoralize it again with right. my with my eyes. Natural 16, uh, so that's uh, 33. 33 against my will DC. Uh, is- nope, you cannot do it again to the same target for oh. 10 minutes. Oh, poo. Right. Do you want to just move, Eris? Yeah, I'll move. I'm going to move up to right right next to Suki. We're going to form a wall of uh, To protect Atticus. (laughs) So sweet. Well, it is uh, Suki's turn. Suki, what do you got? Suki commands Pepsi to take a bite. Uh, Yeah, do it. I dropped my d20. That's going to be, I think that's going to hit 13 plus. What's Pepsi's? 27? 27 hits exactly. Nice. Boom, yes. baby. Okay. Chipping away. <laughs> Max damage. 11 points of piercing. Wow. And then Suki is going to cast her classic electric arc because she's trying not to use all her good spells on this one dude. Do uh, you not so have make, telekinetic projectile? Uh, I do have telekinetic maneuver. Um, Interesting. But it's one of my. I was going to say, Electric Arc is like a two target spell. And now that we're down to one target, I didn't know if there was something better. No, it's my only unlimited uh, cool spell. Damaging spell, yeah. Yeah, I do have acid spell. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Electric Arc, Bazoom. Bazoom, reflex save. Uh, oh, that is a. That's probably going to be a fail. That's a 24. Failure. Nice. nice. Full damn coming Full up. Full damn zoning. At five. Yes. Twelve. Fourteen. Twelve. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> what? I rolled a twelve plus two, my electric. I was just saying numbers it's out plus, loud. Plus four at least, isn't it? It's plus four. Oh, no. no. Okay, right, right, sorry. It's plus two. All right, you take five points of bleed damage, Suki. Now give oh. me a uh, flat check, DC 15. I uh, forgot about the bleed, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> a 19. Oh, okay, great. You're no longer bleeding. I'm right, just guys, quite hurt. These are on fire here. I mean, this is amazing. Watching stomp them. <laughs> uh, all right. I could have easily ended this. 
because obviously you have this battle in hand. But two reasons I didn't. One, I want to chip away, see some people bleed, and two, I have to see Joe roll. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, we got it. <laughs> Joe, uh, please prepare your dice. Ethel, what, you will be, what attacks will you be doing this to? I swear I'll be doing to God. a double slice. I think this slice. should carry over too. If this fight doesn't end here, this should carry over to the next episode. <laughs> yes, Joe has to roll. To roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> Double slice, uh, roll a war. It's once for the Warhammer, once for the Scimitar. Plus nineteen on the Warhammer, plus eighteen on the Scimitar. Okay. The if epic you- white. The epic white die is the uh, Scimitar. Here we go. Oh, snowy. And that's what uh, you want. I'm sorry. What is it? Plus eighteen, plus nineteen. Plus nineteen on the Warhammer, plus eighteen on the Scimitar. Okay. Scimitar is the nat twenty. No nat twenty. Two hits. Two Actually, hits. and uh, it's thirty-five is the one. Yeah. So no, not a crit, but. Oh, two hits. Two hits. All right, give me the damage. Oh, you're going to flens, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm rolling the damage. I'm, oh, God, what is it? 2d6. 2d8, 2d8 plus 7 on the Warhammer, 2d6 plus 6 on the... Uh... Oh, my God. Box cars on the Scimitar. <laughs> All right, so 18 points of damage on the Scimitar, and then Eight. 2d8 plus 7 on the Warhammer. Uh, 17 on the Warhammer. And you kill him in the first. Yes! Game. Wow! yes! So Damn. high on the damage dice. Wow. That uh, was when, awesome. it's, when you're not doing it for you, you I roll know. well. I rolled a natty 16 and a natty 12 on the d20s. I mean, come on. And I think Skid is right. This has to carry over to the first two rounds of the next combat. <laughs> yes. In Boulder. In Speaking Boulder. of which, we'll see you in Boulder! See you in Boulder! Oh, oh, yeah. in Boulder. <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> 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 that was amazing. 